running with hip number one, Kaylee DeLay of Washington in hip number two. They're off and rolling. Carmen Riano of Miami, Ohio. Madeline Stradamo of Little Wing Athletics. Two athletes from BYU, Sadie Sargent and Riley Chamberlain. Greta Karanishkite of CBU. Caitlin Mitchum of Wyoming. Gracie Hyde of Arkansas. Angelina Ellis of Butler. Laura T Taborda of Arkansas, Lexi Halliday Lowry of BYU, Emma G running unattached, Malia Pivik of Oregon, Eleonora Kurtabi of West Texas A&M, Macy Grice of New Mexico, Lucinda Crouch of Wisconsin, Jeanette Schraft of Iowa State, and Paulina Meyer of Arkansas State in this loaded field. Top athletes in Division I, the national leader in Division II, Eleonora Kurtabi in there as well. This is going to be hot right here we are excited at the front already we've got caitlin mitchum of wyoming outstanding runner from wyoming is mitchum she's ranked number three at the ncaa level and then we have Kay kaylee delay of washington she was the ncaa runner up last year representing yale she's transferred to washington and she currently is the national leader in this event. So we have the number one and number two runners in the country running one, two right now as they approach the first water pit. Yeah, Caitlin Mitchum is really, she, she came around that corner and she really took the lead. She opened up a five meter gap that has since closed, but she said, I want to lead this race. So she took it early. She took it fast against some of these really, really, really fast athletes. You can but we see. did have Elise Thorner kind of come back. She got boxed in early around that first corner, but she made her way back. Elise Thorner is our record holder here, both in the meet record and the stadium record. She ran 940 to win here last year. So she is our last year champion. And she is looking strong here, kind of settling into fourth. She finished 40th in NCAA cross country to help her team come in second. And she placed fifth last year in this event in the 3K steeple outdoors at the NCAA championship. The, she's an All-American with four Mountain West championships, six Mountain West awards, and three all-conference academic awards. But it leading still is Kaylee DeLay out of Washington, as you mentioned before. She's a transfer from Yale and last year's steeplechase NCAA runner-up, running 925. She knows how to fly. She Any other year, she's our steeple champion. Unfortunately, last year, 911 was the winning time, I believe. But 925, she's quick. This year, she's run 948, making the fastest time this year in the country. And she is putting it on this field. She has already opened up, and she's opening it up on a field that is loaded with talent, and she's already gapping them here as we're in our first, or about to complete our first kilometer. Thorner, you can see, is leading the chase after. Keep an eye on the clock, 310 as they come through the kilometer mark. One person who's been moving well is Lexi Halliday Lowry of BYU. We talk about that great BYU program. Carmen Wayman, who won the NCAA championship last year over delay, was the tip of the sword there for that BYU squad. Halliday Lowry has already run, she was a cross country All-American, already run 1547 in the 5K this spring. So she's on the front of things of the chase effort. Thorner trying to bring back probably her biggest challenger to an NCAA championship. And right now it looks like it's the Kaylee Delay Show. What do you think about this move this early on a field this tough, Kyle? I mean, she's definitely trying to put on the pressure early and open up too much of a gap for anyone else to close. Usually when someone goes this early, you don't expect them to go this hard so you expect them to, to try to push about 15 to 10 meters but within distance that you can kind of kick and close in she really really put on the burners but as you see now that distance isn't really moving a anymore at least thorner kind of tried to make a push but it, the delays opened up a gap big enough that it'll take a couple laps for this to close unless something drastic happens so she looks great right now. We'll have to see if this strategy helps her in the end. But she, we, she, we know she can run fast. She's run 925 as her personal best. And she is so, so smooth over those hurdles. 
Kaylee DeLay has laid the hammer down early on in a very aggressive move over and is trying to send a message to the rest of the country that the national champion that the national championship is going to go through her. It's going to go through Seattle right now as she probably one of her biggest competitors, Elise Thorner, is sitting 30 meters back right now as we are just about halfway in to this race. And we'll see how this final back half plays out. Did delay go too soon, or is she the dominant force in the NCAA steeplechase field this year? And you can see BYU's Halliday Lowry still running well in third, shadowing Thorner. Elise Thorner has is seems to be gathering a bit and maybe trying to chip into Delay's lead as they get in the back half. We talked about it with the earlier section, some of the inexperienced steeplers that went out too hard that the race really starts at two kilometers. Now we're taking an NCAA runner-up who decided to go early and we'll see if she can hold that move because now Thorner appears to be on the move a bit and begin to chip away. This is setting up for a very interesting final kilometer. You've got the NCAA runner-up with battling the NCAA leader who is chasing, and it was about 30 meters. I would say it's closer to 20 meters right now as they approach that final kilometer. You can see that's a great wide shot there. You can see how that looks. I really like the way Halliday uh, Lowry is running for BYU. It really looks like those three right now, that's your race. And it may be Butler's Angelina Ellis there in fourth. Ellis has run 9.53 already this year at Raleigh Relays. And currently a top 10 in the country. Uh, as they are in the final kilometer now. We said the race usually begins at two kilometers, but for delay, she was in full send mode from the start. And now look at Thorner. She has cut that lead, I believe, in about half. And she's carried Halliday Trethway right with her. Yeah, Thorner's coming. We talked about inexperience before, too. Kaylee DeLay, this was not an experience. This was a strategy, but Thorner knows how to run this track. As we said before, she's the meet and the facility record holder, and she's she's coming now. 7.04, and it is kind of like a math equation here at this point. She ran that last lap about two seconds faster and two laps to go. I would expect on this lap, Thorner will make contact with DeLay, and this we will see a gut check moment for Haley DeLay. Can she match Thorner's rhythm when Thorner gets to her, or is she completely spent? Is her tank empty right now? And we'll see. Delay, and here's the moment. Thorner and Delay pull even with 600 to go. Delay looks like she is in the hurt locker. Thorner goes by strong, makes a definitive move, and she has gapped Delay. Delay is in trouble. She's doing the moonwalk, and it's all Elise Thorner right now. And you got to keep an eye now on uh, potentially Halliday Lowry making a run at Delay. We'll see as they go through this. This water pit will be telling for Delay. Two-footed landing. She is in trouble. Halliday Lowry still in third. Elise Thorner, a very savvy race. She weathered the early storm from Delay, and now she is powering away and making a run. She's your national leader and looking to extend that national lead and improve on her mark as she comes up on a lap to go. How yeah, Kaylee DeLay is really falling back now. I think Elise Thorner is gone. I, I think she wins this by 45, 50 meters. She she played it smart. She knew exactly what she wanted to do. And she didn't go with DeLay when DeLay went early. Now she's gone and has about a 45, 40 meter gap on the rest of the pack. And DeLay has been passed. Keep an eye on Greta Karinishkeit. She's actually in fifth, but she's moving very well. Yeah, the and WAC champion is kind of settled in the back of that chase pack, but now she's really, really pushing, and she's moved up into fourth, about to move up into third. And there's Ellis of Butler we mentioned. She had that great run at the Raleigh Relays where she dipped under 10 minutes. Now she's in second. She's going to break 10 again, but let's keep an eye on the clock. Elise Thorner, she's run 9.32 this year in this event. She won the Brian Clay Invitational. It looks like she's going to go back to back at Brian Clay. This is her meet right now. She won it last year. She's going to win it again this year, and she does so 
with a little bit of drama, having to, to battle the NCAA runner-up early on, weather the storm from her, and now she shows why she's the savvy vet. She's gonna power home. She's gonna be your champion here in the women's steeplechase, dipping under 940, 938 to extend her national lead. A great finish there from Ellis of Butler for second, 944, a new lifetime best for her. It's gonna move her up on the national list. Excellent running there in the women's steeplechase, Elise Thorner. We, sh that, so she wins the early battle in the supremacy for the national championship. You can see Kuratabi there uh, for West Texas A&M. Well, let's not lose sight of her. She ran 9.57. That's her first time under 10 minutes. And then she is the Division II national leader at 9.57. She's the defending national champion in that event. So the national leaders at Division II and Division I in that race. What a run for Elise Thorner. And no rest for the weary. We went slow to fast on the women's side, and now we go fast to slow on the men's side. So we're going to have our championship invite fastest heat of the men as our next event on the track. We'll talk about a little bit about who's in that field coming up here in just a second. Obviously, they have to raise their hurdle heights uh, before we get ready for the men. Yeah, that was a great.